says, I can't hold your hand. This is for advanced investors, not for beginners. You don't know how to short. It's time to learn or go find a real broker. You got $2,000 to your name. Just go watch some PewDiePie or something. Leave me alone. The EA is actually 38 billion market cap. It's not uh, not small EA. Stop being an NPC. I want everybody here to start a company, start a hedge fund, do something with their lives. Be great. So Electronic Arts is on a weird fiscal year. It's wonderful. We love companies like that. It makes so much sense. Why would you use calendar year when you could make your Q4 end in March? It's because they think they have like a brand or some kind of asset worth protecting and they obviously don't. So none of them have any clue how to run a business or do anything like that, but they have shrunk. They have not grown. They were growing. Then they started shrinking. EA has struggled to find its footing against Tencent and Activision and all, all these other companies. Um, AR, if AR is unusually large, I'll add it, but I, I don't, AR is not cash. I mean, it's going to be cash, obviously. If it's unusually large, that's fine. But if you add AR, you have to add AP. You can't have it both ways. If you have, if you're going to count the money that's owed to you, you have to count the money you owe others. Interesting to have like no property plan and equipment. It's like, I guess it makes sense that a video game company wouldn't. No, the gaming industry has been fine. It's just DA. Accrued expenses are not debt. That's just expenses that have been accrued for by the accountants. Accruals are kind of hard to get your head around, but once you realize what they are, you're a light bulb and your kind of head kind of goes off. Expenses that haven't been paid, but also you you started an accrual for. Yeah, the whole EA, FC, I mean, it's all about FC now, which is funny because it used to be all about Madden. Um, I followed this stock 20 years and these guys never got a chance to diversify outside of sports and it's just sad. Sports games are a genre that has sort of gone away. You know, League of Legends dec decimated the sports game. Between FPS, sports games and MOBAs, yeah, there's licensing for sure, but I just think it's, it's how many people are playing that's still kind of the critical thing. Who's this guy? Andrew Wilson. They barely sell games anymore. It's kind of crazy how the business model has shifted. It's all microtransactions now. Crazy, right? Packaged goods. This is what GameStop sells. They're down to 60 million of actual game that you'd pick up. That is 5%. 5% of their revenue is now in that old school format. Yeah, so if there's any doubt GameStop is worthless, the fact that EA's revenue, 5% of EA's revenue is the actual packaged product. I mean, that, if that doesn't tell you what you need to know on the GameStop core business. Now, I think the CEO is a good, good CEO, but you might have seen my video about like, why would you pay more money to be in his, basically in his PE fund? You know, he's basically running a PE fund right now. And you can invest in other PE funds and you you don't overpay when you invest in those. You think Bitcoin's dead? Yeah, I think they're basically quitting and pivoting to other things, you know. People just don't buy games like that anymore. In fact, most of the value of the game is, isn't even purchasable like that. It's purchased, it's, as EA has shown, it's micro transaction. Well, when EA started 40 years ago, it's a very creative company, the idea of, of uh, a video game and what it could be. It was extremely artistic. And most of the people at the company were programmers and artists and sound people and they made beautiful video games. They kind of, uh, if you're just learning a company, it's not easy for you to, you know, necessarily understand what's going to happen to it and predicted stock price or how the market will react to say your forecasts. They'll say your forecasts are exactly right. That still may not be enough because the markets will do whatever they want, right? Just because a company starts making more money or 
more money than even Wall Street expects doesn't mean the stock will go up. Investor psychology is was very important. And it's one of the hardest things to understand. Yeah, I mean DDM is is a is kind of an old way of thinking about it that's academic. It's sort of been replaced by DCF for a reason. You hear the DDM term every now and then from really old school people, but like at the end of the day, the real world represents. It shouldn't matter, leverage shouldn't matter that much. I think what's most important about models is that you're forecasting a steady state. And that's the tri biggest trick of all, because if it's a smaller company, their steady state is either, like let's say it's a smaller company that has 10% margins. Their steady state is either gonna be that they grow and get 30% margins, or that somebody acquires them. And then internally, they have 30% margins at that company. So like the stock will trade as if one of those two things will happen, not as if they'll have 10% margins forever in the transitory state. It's a little like proteins actually. Okay, so free cash flow, last two quarters was 700. There's a lot of ways to follow the gaming industry, which is cool. I used to do it, like I said, professionally. Yeah, but the problem is that C25, you know, will be up year over year, down year over year. So th everything here is about FC, right? Literally the whole company is FC. So we're going to look into whether people like FC or not. Maybe we even play it. <laughs> I don't know anything about football, you know, European football. Oh, they have a lot of games, but they're telling you right here that 73% of their revenue is one game. Apex Legends is dead, it looks like. You can gamble inside of FC. <laughs> really? I don't think people, people just don't play sports games anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm out of touch. I could be. I'll just try to trust the numbers. Yeah, they've gone from three and a half billion to five and a half billion. But look at packaged packages is dry. Again, I keep looking at the GameStop read through. Packages has gone from more than half of game sales to 30%. And then packaged has gone from 25% of revenue to 10% of revenue, less than 10%. Yeah, you gotta trust the numbers more than the people you know and stuff like that, you know, because otherwise the world would look very different. It was run by your, my personal tastes. It's funny, I mean, they're actually still chugging along in cash flow. It's actually pretty impressive picture right here. Eight years, they've grown cash flow 6% a year. It's actually not terrible at all. This looks like anomalous a little bit. Like here is actually 1550. Actually missed a little bit. They made up for it this year. Maybe they pulled in some revenue from that year or something. I don't know. But I don't know, on average, that's like 1.8, 1.9 maybe in trailing cash flow. That's like very, very steadily growing. Still, I'm still not sure the stock's that great because you're looking at this like massive concentration risk. Like they are still a sports only company. I mean, if you think FIFA is going to keep growing, maybe you could be bullish, but like it'd have to be like a GTA like strategy where it's like just gigantic, you know, monolith company that just grows and grows and grows. Yeah, no, in video games, it's perfectly fine to re release the same game every year. That's that's the main meta. You have to have a... No, I think their cost of capital is lower than that. But the main meta is, is sort of like, can you build this towering game that's just gigantic? Right? And I think that the idea of releasing, like, many releases is, like, gone out the window. And so, like, we just have to watch if FIFA can grow game over game or year over year. Get out of here, kitty. But for now, it's still got a little bit more information. Like, ew, right? Like, who would... Who would use this? So yeah, they have this paper here. That's trading for three... 4.4%. EA definitely doesn't have a high cost of capital. Neil, they, they banned me. They banned me from uh, Bloomberg. That's an illicit 
axis. Yeah, so how do we figure out if EA in review FC24? Now, do you keep your cards from one one season to the next? They should probably kill the seasons and just go straight. Straight like that, you know. Okay, so you get to restart each time. I guess it wouldn't make sense if you kept them. Is part of the fun starting from scratch each time? All right, I guess like for my next diligence, I'll actually play the stupid thing and get uh and get some more sense for that. But I think the the cash flow just isn't there. Pay thirty seven billion for two billion a year. That's not really growing and has downside risk. Nah, fam, I ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. No. I mean, it's not horrible, right? Eighteen times earnings, Murph. You gotta be hungry. I am hungry for success. I already have a lot of success, but I'm still hungry. Why? Because I gotta rub it in people's faces. All the people who don't believe in me. What's funny is all these people believe in me now. I'm running out of people to rub it in their face. Starving for success. Not hungry, I'm starving. Well, I mean, that was a pretty interesting company. So they have one drug, Dex, Nexitimab. Dan Yelza is the name for the drug. It's a little bit of a weird drug because it came from uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. It was like fully MSK, like back drug. I think they even did the trials there. Yeah, most people aren't doing stock research on their phone, <laughs> but, you know, really targeting traders who are staying in their office, at home, wherever, you know, who need really detailed information. But like, if you want your to look at your QM, like I, I don't see why we couldn't make something like that or like just a keyboard entry for simple commands. Okay, so they're selling the product, they've been sell selling the product and they're selling a good amount of it. So it's a bit of an unusual company, right? They have real products, a real product that's really selling. I mean, that's kind of a little unusual. Hardware is weird. <laughs> it, it's sort of all about who you're selling to, right? I think it's changing a little bit too with hardware, especially around AI hardware. You know, I think the chip makers have a little bit more power, but in the x86 or RISC architecture, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit less, move, you know, slower moving or Here's a really good example of like steady state. So like company has 80 million in revenue, but no earnings. The problem is they're a publicly traded company. So they have a sales force and they have a management team. So you're looking at like $40 million of expenses right off the bat. But if it were a part of a, an, another oncology company, it would be a lot less. So like this is pretty tempting. 80, 80, 88 million dollar revenue stream for 500 million. Not bad at all. I'm sure there's a catch. No, I don't think AI will make Salesforce obsolete. Oh, like the Salesforces or Salesforce the company, CRM. Salesforce is pretty diverse at this point. It's not just CRM anymore. I mean, they're, they're hustling hard to get AI into their products, so it would be kind of weird. OpenAI will probably hit a trillion. That's a startup. There's a lot of drama. It's actually kind of cool. I don't know. The stock's kind of been left for dead, huh? Okay, so they could expand with a radio labeled antibody, I'm guessing. I don't know why you have to trade Palantir. I'm very bullish on Antilia and I've been very wrong. It's been my one bad stock pick. No, I don't think I. I think valuations, what, for, for what exactly? For stocks? Valuations for stocks are pretty high. And partially it's because of AI adding productivity. I guess I have to look at some of the other GD2 neuroblastoma drugs, but they're ready in the clinic too? Wow. It's impressive. They're really going to own this neuroblastoma indication. I mean, it should probably be a double. I like this. Let me add that to my recommendations list. Limab, long, 
2324. I've been talking about Saba at least a month, right? At least a month. Chag I've only been talking about for like a week. I remember um, shorting Mesa Blast a long time ago. Mesa Blast was like a scammy company in heart failure. Have they shif shif shifted and pivoted and hopefully changed around what they've been doing? So yeah, if you want to make money between now and your end, definitely short Cassava, then short Humicite, then short SLS. Longs, I have a bunch of those too, but those are about to drop like 50% to 80%. I don't think Cassava, I don't think there's any risk in Cassava. It's either going to work or it won't. So of course there's risk, but... Okay, somebody wanted me to look at Oatly, which is kind of a bizarre consumer company. I don't really look at consumer stocks, but... Sega's got a... I, I, I made a bunch of money shorting Sega a while back. Yeah, I'm not allowed to live in Manhattan because... Um, I'm on probation in the Eastern District, which is Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island. I'm allowed to, uh, yeah, only the milk thing, though. Um, I'm allowed to live in um, Manhattan probably in another three or six months or something. Probation should be over. Yeah, I'm going to move back when probation's over, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of scientific fraud. I don't like Brooklyn. I like Manhattan. There's a lot of scientific fraud, and it's not unique to Alzheimer's. I've never modeled a single consumer stock, so I'm gonna try my try my hardest with this thing. And it's weird because it's an ADR. I think it's a Swedish stock. I wonder if they have a Swedish listing. No, I never thought of moving to Albania. Although my mom wants me to find a uh, a wife in Albania, which is probably not a terrible idea. She's like Martin. They speak English now. I was like, hmm, that's a good point. Now with English. <laughs> Eastern European wife. Now with English. <laughs> I think Dua Lipa's uh, one. It's a lot of competition to be with her. Two. I'm not sure I want uh, that kind of wife. Nah, I don't like Brooklyn Heights. It's nice. It's just not my personality. I don't think Dua Lipa's that hot. And that photo shoot she did for Rolling Stone was unforgivable. In the Albanian community, women do not dress like that. Put yourself half naked. A magazine cover to you know respectful dress nice you know beautiful gown perhaps okay Oatly 500 million market cap 147 million in cash actually have 300 million in plan which isn't bad let's talk about debt they've got a lot of debt 300 million in converts another 6 million here Another 115 here. Ooh, that's not good. So balance sheet pretty upside down. Well, Tepper's a pretty good trader, so the long China trade is on, I guess. But I'm not a macro guy. Some of the stocks look cheap, like Alibaba and Baidu, but uh, I wouldn't be counting on a cancer vaccine to work. BioNTech is trying. I'll analyze it if you want, but it's uh, usually takes. I don't know, maybe three or four years from now. Okay, so Oli has the gross margins you would expect. 29% for food company. No revenue growth. So the trend, trendy oat milk is no longer that trendy. 3% revenue growth there. Um, let me see some cash flow. Oh, no, huge money loser. Yeah. This is a bankruptcy candidate for sure. The credit is now in play. Let's look at the convert. $86 million loss for six months. $113 million loss for six months last year. They're almost out of cash. Let's look at the converts. Where are the converts trading? Oatly. It's a nine and a quarter bond. Yeah, for some reason it's not pulling the price up. But that convert is sus. You could short the stock and longly convert, maybe. Pretty ugly situation over at Oatly. They were going to make new production facilities. Oh, poor guys. I almost feel bad for them. 